doing? So I was doing everything in here. You know, I gotta stop you because you're talking to me right now, and I'm like, in my head, I'm like, holy shit, that's freaking ridiculous, <laughs> man. You have no idea. I I hope no, we will get into that. This is a funny story that you say that because there's a guy in the gym <laughs> whose cousin is Tim McGraw. Yeah. And he was in the South. I guess he was talking to Tim. They were talking about working out. And Tim says, Well, I work out with Rick Drayson every day. He says, Wait a minute, wait, Rick Drayson? And he says, Yeah. He says, and this is Tim McGraw. He says, I had his poster on my dorm wall when I was growing up. He was my idol. Oh yeah. Tim McGraw, really? When are you gonna put him on the show? I don't know. If he ever comes out here. Sky, dude. Well, we'll see. I'll, I'll talk to him about it. I've heard the story too many times from the guy. It doesn't matter anymore. But... Oh. Would you get out of the car? <clears throat> well, no, but I mean, you know. Oh, no, it's just another the one. Nice I have a whole case in the back seat. That's... We don't need one. Yeah. We're not going to have time for everything, so. Oh, well, I'm just, okay. see, whatever key you want to play in, I play. I like key of X. Yeah. Well, that's what I need to know. That's why I carry A through G. Yeah. Can you uh, play that one by itself? Yeah, I can play them all by himself, but if you're in the key of A, I play four bars down. Well, were you going to play with him? or No, I'm not going to play with him. I'm not playing. You he's are. not playing. Oh, I am. Oh, give me, I'll take the D. But we'll do it at the end. Oh, okay. Here, he's let me... got this one sitting here. Okay. So this is key D. All right, can we start? Okay, we're ready to go. Welcome to Rick's Corner. I have a guest today from San Diego who is a police officer. He's got so many credits and so many abilities and so many medals. He's such a great guy who likes to talk about a lot of stuff that really will interest you. It's my pleasure to have Steve Markland. Tunker. Tunker. Thank you for being here. The pleasure is mine. This is the, the great Rick reason. It's amazing. Thank you. I used to be. I used to be my mother's son. Um, so let's talk about you for a minute. Going back in time, you had an interest in training, obviously. Mm -hmm. What what spurred that on? Jack LaLanne. Really? Absolutely. Jack LaLanne, um, I was in elementary school. I used to get up, my mom used to get up early. I have five sisters and two brothers. So she used to get up really, really early to have to cook a huge, gigantic breakfast, obviously. I used to get up with her. And I think it's because I was always hungry, you know. Uh, so I'd get some extra scraps. But yeah, sure. she'd have Jack Elaine on because yeah. he came on black and white. We only had three stations on the TV. Me too. Anyway. Same yeah. thing. And, uh, and now we have 400. Can't find one thing to watch. I can't find nothing to watch. <laughs> <laughs> but I love Jack Elaine. He, not just his fitness, but he was such a positive yeah. energy guy. No and question there was, about it. Even at a young age, I said, man, that, there's something about that guy. And that stuck with me ever since. And then, How old were you? I was pre-elementary school. So All right, but I, why'd like, you actually start with the weights? The weights was probably, my dad was a drill instructor in the Marine Corps. Okay. So he used to bring home pugil sticks and we started, I have older brother, so he made us fight up at 0500 doing body style exercises mm -hmm. all the time, you know, push up, sit ups and all, flutter kicks, that kind yeah. of thing. And then when I started Pop Warner, so it must have been around 11 or 12, uh, my dad started, um, he brought home an old uh, Olympic weight set, 110 pounds or whatever. Yeah, remember those? Yeah, it was one I of those. I don't know why it was 110. I mean, why not 120 or it 100? It was 110. Always 110. Look at the collars. With those heavy collars, like yeah. five pound collars. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and it, I remember because we would go to football practice, he'd drive home through a drive through dairy and make me drink like this pint of milk. Yeah. You, you guys always yeah. chug milk. So actually, this, you guys, it was cream. <laughs> this is the 60s, so yeah. I'm, and just so your viewers know, I'm 56, and so if that means anything. That means a lot. So back then. Because you're I, younger than me. I was, <laughs> how old are you now? I, I'm 39. Okay. Holding. And holding. Yeah. So uh, he'd make me chug that, and then I'd go home and have dinner. But yeah. we started lifting weights, and then um, every once in a while, I'd get a hold of these magazines, the Muscle and Fitness yeah. magazine. Yeah, yeah, and that's inspirational. But what really turned me on was, uh, like, of course, Arnold. And I was a child of the TV generation. Mm -hmm. I watched Flip Wilson. I saw you on yeah, Flip Wilson. I still have the. I tape. saw you on Sunny and Cher. I was younger, obviously. Yeah. But I didn't know you, but I knew now I put the pieces together <clears throat> and right. all those television shows. But bodybuilding was different then. It was really different. It was kind of more of a cult. There weren't a lot of guys around. I mean, there were like 15 of us in Venice. Anytime we'd go outside of Venice, down down L.A. or Hollywood, it's really like, look at those guys, my God, those guys are huge, I wonder what they do. I told them I was a gynecologist, it's just having to have a body like this. But it um, it was a rare thing, and training was different, it was just basic. Mm -hmm. Did you just start with basic training? Absolutely basic, but I have to finish that story because 
I must have been in sixth and seventh grade, and Dave Draper yeah. was on the Beverly Hillbilly. That's right. And Ellie Mae had brought him home. Right. And when Granny saw him, she thought he was all swollen, and so she was trying to make some possum stew right. to take the swelling down, and it was hilarious episode. Do you remember what she called it? No, I don't. Barbell bloat. No way. Yep. It's called the barbell bloat. You had the barbell bloat. You remember that? See, that's sure awesome, I do. man. I because do. I watched those things, too, and then once I moved down here, I became part of that group, and that was before I, before I had moved here. And then here all the guys were, and you're in the gym, and you're with one of the guys after that. But that's what it was. And that's what's ins inspirational about it, training back then. Basic training. I mean, it was like basic chest, back, shoulders, arms, and legs, and three exercises, four exercises, three sets, four sets. And it, and it worked, right? It worked for me, and I'm still healthy, mm -hmm. no injuries. But when I started working out, there was a real steep hill by my house called Ilian Street. My dad used to make me run up and down that hill, Yeah. make me push his car, those kinds of things. And then we would do... All the fundamentals, no fancy stuff, just fundamental. Yeah, basics. Basics. And then I continued on that, and I realized, like, by doing that, all of a sudden, when I was carrying the ball, I was a running back, and I smashed into somebody, they would fall down. And I got turned on by that. That, that power was translatable to functional strength. You sure. Know? So from then on, I was, in my head, it was always about speed and power, speed and power, speed and power. And, like, I could have been... A whole lot bigger and stronger, but I wouldn't be as fast. Or I could you, you just mentioned that earlier before we started on this about incorporating speed and power into your life and doing uh, uh, feats now and doing but it was Olympics contests and stuff like that. Yeah, the police Olympics, like four hundred meters, eight hundred meters, yeah. fifteen hundred meters. And tell me about that again. Well, what they know? Oh, okay. Well, what they know, and the good thing about it is um, there's. Weight, uh, age classifications, mm -hmm. and now I'm what they call Grandmaster B, so I'm in the 55 and over division. Right. And so it makes it fair, and you know, for all of us old timers that come in, and we're not like we were when we were 20, but of course. Um, so trying to work out with uh, with weights, I like to work heavy. I've never had any joint problems or injuries, so I like to work heavy. But drop sets for me, drop sets are great. They're the best ever. So yeah. I love pyramiding up, and then to get my warm up going, I still get a good pump at my age 55 yeah. i still get cranking and then uh but when you get you max out my wife who's sitting in the audience today uh she sits right there pulls the pin drops two plates keep going to failure it's drops two plates that's the best it's the best and not only do you get the strength and the power but the muscle endurance exactly to go out there and so like a lot of the a athletes that I, or my police recruits that i train they run out of gas too fast and you just you, you they would fail in the third round of a five yeah, round it, fight you it, know you got to yeah. go five rounds five it's rounds a, it's five a different rounds. world today like that it's, mm -hmm. it's just people aren't used to that type of training mm -hmm. and then the trainers nowadays they have the balls and this and that and all this other core stuff you didn't need that back then to build a body we didn't even have cardio back then there's nothing in the gym with cardio but what about your nutrition your diet how do you eat well again i'm really lucky uh I have a wife who's Portuguese and she cooks really healthy good meals all yeah. the time so the staples at home are really good I, I, I love protein diets yeah yeah um, but because of my job right now with the police department and on some days I'll have 250 recruits that I'm running through their obstacle course so from 3 30 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon I'm running and screaming running and screaming I need carbs oh yeah so I'm chowing down on carbs as well yeah I have to keep fueled up but I've been carrying a lunchbox with me for 12 years, the exact same one. I pack my meals. I teach our recruits how to eat as well. Yeah. And just so you know, like in San Diego PD, we don't have any donut eaters left. They're every, <laughs> they're all gone. Uh, everyone hydrates, brings yeah. fluids. Oh, you gotta hydrate. You gotta hydrate. I, cops in the old days used to always have kidney stones and stuff because they didn't drink enough fluids. Well, a lot stuff. of people today don't drink enough water. Mm -hmm. You gotta have fluids to keep going. It, it can, there's a lot of uh, uh, ailments from dehydration. You might not even know you're de dehydrated, but that can be a lot of serious stuff going on. Oh, absolutely. How many days a week are you training? Um, I try to get something in six days a week. <clears throat> you split your body parts up? Yes, I do. I'm old-fashioned. I'm a push-pull guy, so, you know, chest and try, back and by, you know, that kind of thing. And then, yeah. And then the legs is different now. Um, because my thighs have a tendency to just get really huge, uh, fast, at least for my frame. So I like to run hills. I love to run hills because I'm into speed and functional strength. So my glutes, quads, hammies. Yeah. Um, 
it's equivalent to doing squats. I'm sure it is. It really is. And nowadays with the training vests, you get the weighted vests and right, stuff. Right, right. Um, as a matter of fact, um, what I like about watching your show is reading the comments. Oh boy. You well, <laughs> you got some you got some smart Alec guys oh, you out get there. Those, you get those. But you know what? This is what I like about reading those comments is they all have strong opinions. Yeah. And there's a reason they have strong opinions is because they've been at the gym working and this is what works for them. Exactly. And you've said that a billion times on this show. This is what works for me. Yeah. This is what works and, for and me. And here's the thing. You don't go to the doctor. He doesn't give everybody the same medicine. If he does, he's just lazy. Because maybe that medicine doesn't work for that guy, and that one doesn't work for that one, that one doesn't work. That works for that one, won't work for that one. Right. So it's the same thing with your workout. Now a lot of guys are doing high reps, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50 reps a set. I don't, I don't know. I could probably do it. I haven't tried it. I do 20, 25. Mm -hmm. But you start getting 26, 27. It's like, okay, I'm done. I don't want to do it. I, I just think that's joint fatigue, and you're asking, yeah. asking for a problem. As a matter of fact, I get a just tons of people, guys and gals, coming in that are hardcore CrossFit. And uh, they're the most injured of them all because they're doing 500 sissy squats. Oh my God, I know. It's like, crazy why stuff. 500? Why not 300 or yeah. 172? What's the functional goal of doing 200 air squats? Sure. I don't, I've never understood that. Let me that. ask you this. You've noticed in gyms when you see people on treadmills, I, I mean, we have people that are there all day long. They're on the treadmill all day long, every day, and you look at them over the years, they've never changed. They don't have any more muscle, they don't have any less fat, they look the same. They're overdoing everything. It's just overtraining. And some people say, well, there's no such thing as overtraining. Yes, there is. You tire a muscle out, it's not going to respond unless you rest it, right? And these CrossFit people come in, they're very strong, Yeah. and uh, they're easy to work with because they have some discipline. Uh, but I usually just have to increase their aerobic conditioning, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they're pretty good to go. Um, let's talk about something else while we're here. For the viewers out there that live in your area in San Diego, mm -hmm. you're recruiting for the police department. Always. We're let's always talk about we, that for oh, a Okay. We have, um, San Diego Police Department is uh, actively hiring. We've been traveling around all the western states. We have teams in Nevada, Arizona, all the military bases, colleges. We're trying to increase our staffing, so we're looking for about 700 new officers yeah. uh, to come in and um, get going. And so that's why I'm glad you let me on here. And just at least one of the things to pitch, you yeah, know, sure, is not just that, but um, fitness, nutrition, life in general. You know, well, it's your lifestyle. And when I saw you walk in the gate, it scared the hell out of me. I said, "That guy's huge and in shape." No, you look awesome. You really look awesome, and that pays. What you've done. I mean, you're a man's man. You've done it all, and you stay in good shape. And your attitude is fresh and you've got good ideas. I, I respect that. But there's another thing. Oh, there You're is. also a musician. I am a musician. Let's talk about that. Okay. Well, um, it's, believe it or not, I, just to let your viewers know, I became an officer when I was 42. So I kind of raised my kids with the wife and retired and then started a, a whole new life. Okay. Uh, so I was a musician before that. Believe it or not, I was singing in punk bands and stuff like that. Pretty hardcore. And my sons, uh, followed us around and grew up in the, we were all good fighters, exercise, and we all were artists of some kind. Yeah. And like you, you know, you paint, you play. Well, if you're creative in one avenue, you'll be creative in others. It's just part of your makeup. You can start something and be creative with a lot of different things. Well, you came to Hollywood to be a guitar player, right? I did. And what were you playing then? I just, I was just doing good. Well, actually, I, I came, I went to Battle of the Bands, I got a deal with Capital, and then uh, I made a left turn into pro wrestling from bodybuilding, and then that's where my road went. I didn't want to play acid rock. Is that what you guys were doing? Well, I like Chet Atkins stuff and Les Paul and all that, that mild stuff. That's the kind of guitar I like. I mean, I play rock and roll and blues. I like blues. But I just didn't, I saw the kids here that, I don't know, it just didn't fit the mold for me. But I still play. Well, you got to you gotta keep the soul refreshed. Yeah. Stay positive. <clears throat> Think, look down there. There's always something better coming and, and just there don't is. settle. Don't, don't be content. You know, you got to stay hungry. I think that was one of Arnold's lines. Yeah, it is, but the gym, and for all you people out there that are bodybuilders, you know, bodybuilding is great. It, it opens the doors for a lot of things. If you present yourself properly, if you present yourself like a jerk, look at me how big I am, a tough guy, it's not going to work. But it opened the doors for me for TV, for wrestling, and for this show, and for other things I've done in life. Had I never done bodybuilding, I probably wouldn't be doing this now. You know, it just, it opens it, and Arnold the same way. He came here as a bodybuilder, made it big, and then an actor, then a governor. It's how far you want to take it. Do you, uh, I watched an episode of your show with Rich Piana. Yeah. It was about camaraderie. Yeah. When I walk in, my wife and I walk into our gym, 
It's like Norm from Cheers. Exactly. Everyone says, hey, it's Steve from across the room. Yeah. I love that. And it makes it fun. It's family. It, it's family. It's positive energy. It doesn't mean we're chatting. We're still working. Yeah. But we all have friends. And we have something in common that we can talk about and stuff. And you it's can go cool. anywhere in this world. Um, and if you walk into a gym mm -hmm. and you're a bodybuilder, you train like we do, and you're open to friendship, you'll have friends showing you all around the city. It's just how it works. The same thing with wrestling. Every time I wrestled anywhere, anytime I walked into a place and I was doing wrestling on TV, they saw me, they opened the doors for everything. I found restaurants I never heard of. I mean, it's, it's just the way it is. So bodybuilding does open a lot of doors if you approach it properly. And they're, they're the biggest fans of our band in San Diego. They come to our shows. So that's the way we, the ground floor is. And it, so, What kind of music are you playing? Well, we have a fusion of funk and blues. Mm -hmm. um, my son's... Uh, uh, my oldest son Justin, he was a uh, sniper in the Marine Corps, and now he's out. My other son was pararescue special forces, he's out. Uh, Justin plays bass, Aaron plays guitar, and our uh, good friend Randy Jones was retired Navy. So we're all service guys. Um, but j my son started writing music, and uh, one's a funk guy like the Chili Peppers, and the other one's like Jack White on guitar. Mm -hmm. They started writing songs, and they said, hey dad, throw some harmonic on top of this and see what happens. But what happens is, uh, or did happen, was this. This is yeah. our first CD, and uh, this is our, my family. But whatever we did is strict strike an accord because we're on the fifth printing of CDs already in seven months. We're like 5,000 iTunes downloads and video plays, and we've been playing in New Mexico and Arizona. We got the, we just played the Whiskey A Go-Go up here. Oh, nice, yeah. Had the best time ever. The whiskey is so much fun. They treated us like kings up there, and, and we just blew the place up. You sound like me. My two boys had a band. They're both musicians, but they played together several years ago. You have Priscilla's Coffee Shop over here in Toluca Lake, and I went one night and said, Hey, Dad, sit in with us. you got to be kidding. You want me to? Of course I will. I didn't think you'd ever ask me. So I grabbed the guitar and sat in and played some old standards with them. And it made, this is my boys, and I'm playing guitar with them. It's great. Well, we're grown-up men now, and uh, it's we rock hard. And uh, as a matter of fact, I think one of the best... Uh, reviews we got was a newspaper in Arizona that said one reason to see the band Marklin is because they have a 220 pound harmonica player that dances like a five year old on Red Bull and that's me so I go crazy on stage as soon as I hear that music I can't stand still we're a high energy show and people like it and um, we've been getting a lot of offers to play in San Diego we got the Del Mar Fair coming up OB Street Fair which is a big event and those are like you know 100,000 people yeah type you guys are down there go see them for sure I gotta go check that out that'd be awesome yeah and if you're in LA and you need a band you call us too well I'm gonna lead out with you doing the harmonica you are yeah but hold on one second I just gotta mention Thank for you. all of you guys out there I have my t-shirt designs coming out well within one week to ten days and Rick Drace and Originals dot com uh, I'm gonna have tank tops and v-necks all the old designs like my Gold's Gym and uh, Golden Era of Bodybuilding, which is a good one, and Muscle Beach and all those. So stay tuned for that. You'll be able to go to the website. It's live. You order direct. You get shipped within a couple of days. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And so I would like to, I said Steve is here, and this is he's just a great guy. He does play the harmonica, and we're going to close out with his music, and then I'm going to download this up to my computer, and I'm going to use it as my opening. How's that sound? Wow, that's awesome. That, that is great? awesome. It, this is a great thing. And hey, the, all my fellows at... Uh, World Gym, San Diego. Thanks for the t-shirts. I appreciate the hookup. Yeah, World Gym's number one. Yeah, no question. All right, here we go. That's so, excellent. Something like that. That's excellent. Thank you so much for being here. Rick, it's a pleasure. It's mine. I don't even know what to say. This has well, been great. Just say, I hope okay. we can do it again sometime. I, we haven't even touched on half of the million of stories we've Well, it's, I only have a time limit, otherwise I would. Okay, well, that's why you have part two. That's right. Three two or three of the whole volume <laughs> and the epilogue. Exactly. Thank you guys for watching Rick's Corner, and we'll see you next time. So long.
It's RickDrayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.